I'm Юрий Шлепнев, президент and founder of Symbirian Inc. We develop and distribute Symbior Electromagnetic Signal Integrity Software for analysis of PCB and packaging interconnects operating at extremely high data rates. This is a demo of how coaxial connector launch works. I'll use connector launch example from CMP28 channel modeling platform provided by Wild River Technology. CMP28 is equipped with uh, SMA uh, connectors with um, 2.9 mm coaxial opening uh, facing the board side. The coaxial section of the bottom, uh, at the bottom of the connector is perfect place to decompose problem in two parts. Uh, connector itself and the board part or launch. Launch is a transition from um, connector to the board trace. Uh, micro strip transmission line in this case. Uh, it should provide kind of non-reflective pass to the um, electromagnetic field, to the signal. Connector model may be provided by manufacturer or built with the measurements. I use production version of Symbior THD software to build launch model and compute the fields with Symbior 3 dtf solver. Launch analysis and optimization is stack up dependent and usually done by signal integrity engineer, uh, such as in this case. Signal via gets through the board and is surrounded uh, by uh, stitching vias uh, to make it independent from the rest of the board, or in other words, to localize it. Sizing opening or anti pads in, in the plain metallized layers are adjusted to minimize the reflection uh, up to about 50 gigahertz in this case. I will show the analysis to measurement correlation uh, uh, for this launch design in the last part of this demo. First, um, uh, let's start with the fun part. Observe power flow, surface currents and electromagnetic fields uh, in the launch. Here we are looking at the power flow or pointing vector on a logarithmic scale, pre-computed and animated for harmonic field at uh, 1 gigahertz. 1 volt 50 ohm uh, uh, source is located at the coaxial opening right below the connector uh, and micro strip on the um, other end is terminated with uh, 50 ohm uh, micro strip port. Um, arrow direction if you take a closer look, uh, depicts power flow vector direction at a particular location, uh, at a particular time uh, relative to uh, period shown here. Size and color depict uh, power flow magnitude uh, in dB uh, right here, uh, normalized to the maximal value of the uh, power flow uh, also shown here. As you can see, electromagnetic uh, field power pushed right from the connector side through this big antipod opening uh, into a small opening and then it gets uh, kind of spreads between the planes um, and then pushed, magically pushed back into this opening here. So the Teaching V is uh, basically uh, cage this electromagnetic energy inside and guide this through um, the whole structure. Um, and then it just uh, pushed into those openings, spreads, pushed back, and then finally it pushed to the other side, um, to the micro strip line, and gets into this. Uh, uh, micro strip uh, dominant mode of the micro strip line. So let's compare power flow at different frequencies. I pre computed it here at a uh, few frequencies 15 gigahertz. Now we can see, um, um, well, if at 1 gigahertz we see almost simultaneous kind of uh, power flow uh, through the structure. Um, no wave effect. At 15 gigahertz we can see minimus uh, and maximus of the field. Uh, 
it just wave more wave like process um, the field spreads uh, kind of the, uh, the the power we can see power vectors uh, farther from the signal views but it's still caged by the stitching views uh, 25 gigahertz again field spreads even more comparing to 1 gigahertz you can see uh, kind of quarter of wavelengths clearly here Oh, uh, half of wavelength, sorry. Um, what about 50 gigahertz? Wow. What happens at 50 gigahertz? Well, we can see that the power flow goes outside of this caged area. And you can see it just kind of goes into this direction between the planes so the arrows pointing sideways what happens well the v uh, the launch uh, loses the localization property so to see it clearly i actually pre-computed the cut plane views and i'll complement this arrow view with uh, cut plane views uh, around them every side of the structure and we can clearly see how the energy escapes from this launch. And I'll make this like this. So we can see that uh, almost the same amount of energy escapes through the interplane area here, uh, through this opening between the stitching vias. Almost the same energy as, uh, gets to the other end, uh, to the microstrip line. So clearly launch is not functional at this point. And uh, right here I use absorbing boundary conditions to simulate it. Uh, but uh, the problem is uh, in real board this, uh, um, the energy does not really kind of, uh, is not absorbed by anything. It just goes, reflects and absorbed by uh, losses in dielectric and conductor may uh, return back. So it, in other words, it, uh, the behavior of such launch uh, becomes dependent on the, um, uh, on the rest of the board, which is extremely difficult to simulate, almost impossible at 50 gigahertz especially. So uh, the launch becomes unpredictable. This is really important to understand. So we can see most of the energy escapes through this area here in, in uh, between the, those planes. The color is red. Uh, it does escape through the sides. So we can, um, and even on the other side, but uh, we can see that on a very different scale. So the maximal value is uh, much, much smaller here. So uh, now let's take a look at um, uh, the electric magnetic field, uh, surface current density at different slices of the structure. So um, uh, at 25 gigahertz, for instance, okay. Uh, I will just uh, select a slice uh, on the top and you'll see this uh, large opening here. This is a power flow through this large opening. Well, now we can uh, take a look at uh, electric field. Electric field, you can see it reminds kind of coaxial uh, electric field of coaxial line, but it's not quite coaxial line, so we can still see kind of distortion uh, here. Uh, magnetic field, again, almost a magnetic field of a uh, coaxial line, just goes uh, back and forth around this wire. Current density, and the wire in this case is a central signal via. The current density, this is um, actually surface current density, it's interesting to see, it's on logarithmic scale, so just to, to exaggerate the values and see those. Uh, we can see on this plane goes this direction and simultaneously on the other side of this plane it goes in the opposite direction 
and most of the current goes through the signal via and interior uh, parts of the stitching wheels. So we don't see much current on this side. So let's step into the structure and take a look at the small opening over there. A little down. So on a, on a small opening again we can see um, those currents getting to those uh, stitching vias and here we can see more current on the outside section of those vias. And this uh, about electric field. Let's take a look at electric field. Almost like axial, but not quite there. And right here you can see it spreads uh, into this area. So we can see electric field uh, far from the signal via. Magnetic field. Yeah, it goes as far as to those stitching wheels. Almost kind of caged with those stitching wheels here. Power flow. See how it is magically squeezed into this area. And we are looking now at power flow and magnetic field. And this is just power flow. Squeezed into this area and then spreads and then squeezed into this uh, small opening. How it compares with uh, 50 gigahertz? Well, that's uh, 50 gigahertz. You can see it just escapes through the this side. So finally let's take a look at the bottom side. And again I'll um, just cut use cut plane here. Too far. And first opening. And now we can see how power is uh, kind of pushed into this micro strip line. And we can also observe the electric field like a hedgehog here. This part is capacitive, and we can see how the electric field of the dominant transmission uh, microstrip mode is formed. Magnetic field again from circulating around this signal via uh, this area it gets into circulation around the microstrip. Current density and you can see how relatively large current goes below the strip but on the other side current goes into opposite direction you can see the shadows on, on the opposite side and and there is some amount of current going here so there is still energy escaping through this but uh, very small comparing to what we get through the structure. Finally how this model correlates with the measurements. Here I have post layout analysis in Symbior uh, and a um, few structures was simulated and compared with measurements in particular, this um, two-inch segment of transmission line with uh, launches and connectors. The model is created uh, by concatenating S-parameter models in uh, linear network. So um, here is comparison of the measured blue uh, with um, uh, model green, uh, and right here measured uh, orange model brown uh, reflection and transmission. You can see excellent correlation in transmission and decent correlation in reflection. Uh, we can get exact correlation in reflection, I'll explain why. Um, angle, uh, this is uh, group delay, uh, circles uh, model, stars uh, measured. This is phase delay, almost on top. TDR, uh, we can see all those uh, TDR deviation on the measured 
red and uh, orange. And this is because of uh, vivo effect, uh, manufacturing tolerances, and blue is the model. So we can see this is a, a launch, how it looks like comparing to measurement. Eye diagram. So eye diagrams, uh, basically, they should be on top of each other, uh, like this. Um, blue uh, is uh, measured, green uh, simulated, and this is uh, parameters of eye diagram. They're very, very close measured versus simulated at 28 gigabit per second. Uh, 8 inch transmission line, same thing. Uh, insertion loss is excellent correlation almost all the way up to 50 gigahertz despite on this localization loss. But we can see the effect of the localization loss here. Um, reflection, again it's a decent correlation. Um, and um, Group delay, phase delay, almost on top, simulated versus measurement. Uh, TDR, you can see more deviation for, of the impedance on this 8-inch line. That's why we saw this uh, differences in reflection. This uh, reflection is very sensitive to all impedance variation in the structure. And uh, eye diagrams, they pretty much on top of each other. This is a, the end of this demo. To learn more, visit simbirian.com. Application notes, um, webinars, and knowledge base sections. Or download and try Simbir now. It is available in download section. Thank you.